So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and we are officially less than one week away from WWDC and iPadOS 15 Beta 1 being released to developers, which I'm so excited for to see what Apple's got cooking for iPadOS 15. I'm hoping it's gonna be something amazing that really helps kind of illustrate how good the M1 chip is gonna be on the iPad Pros, but let's see what they actually do. But in today's video, I've been looking at a lot of rumors, some leaks, you know, some features that people think are gonna happen or not happen. So here, we're gonna talk about nine features that iPadOS 15, I guess we'll call this a wish list because they're features that aren't set in stone, obviously, but there's nine features that I wanna talk about. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna rate them from a scale of one to 10. One being it's not happening whatsoever and 10 being it's a sure thing that it's gonna happen on June 7th with WWDC. But without further ado, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's jump right into this. Feature number one, which I think is gonna come to iPad OS, is gonna be a redesigned home screen, right? So I do believe we're gonna be able to move widgets around wherever we want, probably place icons off of that grid. So right now, Apple has always lift off the grid of top left to bottom right. So you can't really put a, an app icon on the bottom right without the whole screen being filled up with apps or app folders. So I do think that we're gonna be able to have some free customization. So like I said, widgets being added to the home screen, being able to have apps anywhere on the screen. And yes, we're still gonna follow the grid, but not from the left to right. They're gonna let us place them in any order that we want, which is gonna be nice to have. So I do believe that some sort of redesigned home screen is a 10 out of 10, right? I think this is definitely gonna happen and they need for this to happen because I think it's the easiest way for Apple to appease a lot of the iPad users to make them feel like they got a newer device with the new updated home screen. But in reality, they didn't really do much on their end. For them, I think it's a very low risk, high reward situation if they do bring the redesigned home screen. And then one thing that I did wanna add kind of like a subcategory to the home screen is being able to drop files and folders from the files application and have them as app icons, right? Right now you can run shortcuts to kind of get through that. But right now I literally wanna be able to grab a file from my files app, drag it onto the home screen and leave it on my home screen as if it's an app and then I can just easily access it. I'm gonna put that at a six or seven out of 10, 6.5 we'll say. Because I do think, that, like I said, we're gonna get the redesigned home screen, but let's see how much customization we're gonna get on that home screen. Another big one that's been talked about a lot is a redesigned control center. Now, I don't really know what the need for a redesigned control center is, because again, it's not gonna be a function transformation, it's gonna be a visual transformation. And for the most part, you know, control center has worked fine, it looks good, I don't have any complaints about it currently, but I do think they're gonna create the design language a little bit more around Big Sur. So you guys saw how when Apple released Big Sur, they brought the control center over, and yes, it's not a touch first interface, but the control center on Mac OS Big Sur looks like it could be a touch interface. I think they're probably gonna bring that control center over to iPad OS, which I guess is nice. I mean, whatever, you know, it's no big deal to me, but I do think that's gonna happen. They're gonna do something with the control center. So I'm gonna put that as a nine out of 10 with me being pretty sure that something's gonna happen with the control center. Also with this list, we're going in descending order. So the final one is gonna be my least likely feature to show up. So if you guys wanna skip to that, go for it. The next feature that I think is gonna to come to iPadOS 15 is an app library. Maybe not the identical version of the app library that we have on iOS 14, but I, but I did find myself using the app library a lot. Like I didn't think it was gonna be a great feature for iOS 14. I thought it was like, all right, cool. We have like an app drawer like Android has had since day one. But I use that app library literally every single day. I like being able to not have my applications all over my home screen and be able to kind of like hide them from my home screen. And then whenever I actually need it, I either go to the app library or just use Spotlight from the home screen to go to the app that I want to use. So app library was a welcome addition to iOS 14 and I'm hoping that it does come to iPadOS 15 and I'm going to give that an eight out of 10 in terms of, I think it is coming because I don't see why they wouldn't. And again, it's a low risk, high reward, give the people what they want sort of situation without reinventing the wheel with Apple on Apple's side. So that's just kind of how I'm thinking about Apple's mentality with all these new feature sets. Okay, this next one is gonna be a little bit different, a little strange. I don't know if a lot, how many people actually want this, but I want some sort of Apple Watch integration, right? Some Apple Watch integration onto the iPad Pro or any iPad OS device. Because right now you cannot access your Apple Watch data on your iPad Pro or any iPad, therefore. You can only access it through the Watch app or through the Health app on the actual iPhone. So what I would love to have is be able to have that dashboard on the iPad and then also have even better you know, Apple Fitness uh, integration. Because right now, yes, you can use Apple Fitness through the iPad and it does connect to your Apple Watch and it does work kind of seamlessly. But then once you're done with the workout, you're done interacting with the interface on the iPad. And if you wanna check on things, you gotta to go to your iPhone. So I want a better Apple Watch, Apple Fitness integration for the iPad and iPad OS. And I'll give that probably a five out of, five out of 10, because 
I don't think it's a big deal for a lot of people, but it's just something that I kind of want. So now let's talk about a big one that a lot of people want that I don't know why Apple hasn't revamped, and it is the file system. So Apple did help out a little bit with the file system by adding that, you know, the search bar or the navigation bar on the left-hand side to make it seem a little bit more desktop-y or more traditional from a file system standpoint. But there's still, I don't, I don't know what it is about the file system. It's just not as welcoming as the Finder or even the file system on Windows because the way you have to interact with it isn't efficient. I don't know what, there's a very strange way, there isn't a great way to describe how the feeling of the file system is, because technically, you know, in a vacuum, it should work the same, right? It's a tiered list of folders that you can kind of keep clicking through to get to the file that you want, but it's just very different. And then one thing that I need them to add is a progress bar when transferring files. Like, how is it possible that if you're transferring a 10 gigabyte or 100 gigabyte file, you don't know when it's gonna be done. And if you get up and the screen goes black, sometimes that file stops transferring and you have to restart again. So giving me a progress bar inside the file system would be amazing to have, especially because now I have the 128 gig model iPad Pro, which is over here. So I'm gonna be moving a lot of files from SSDs to the iPad and vice versa. So having a progress bar for the file system is something that needs to happen. And I'm gonna rate that a five out of 10 because I don't know if Apple's gonna give that to us for some reason. Like there's, in my gut is telling me that Apple might not bring that to us. So instead of including a little sponsor in this video, I just wanna sponsor and shout out myself. Subscribe to the channel, guys. If you guys are interested in any iPad, iPadOS content, definitely subscribe, especially for this next week coming up, because you know it's gonna be crazy. But if we continue on with our list, this next one is one that I've actually always wanted, and it is an unlimited dock on the iPad Pro. With Mac OS, you can have as many icons and apps and anything you want on the dock, and Basically, it'll just create the files to be tiny or create the apps and the app icons will be so, so tiny. And I've had that before. I've had like 60 apps on my dock on my Mac. But with the iPad, I think you're limited to 15 or 18 depending on which size iPad you have and depending if you have the suggested app icons in the settings turned on because that takes up, up to three different icons. So I believe 18 is the max you can do if you turn off the suggestion. But I would like to be able to do 25, 30. Like let me add them all onto the dock so I can leave my home screen totally blank and also not have to create like folders that look really ugly on the dock. So that one, I think it's a three out of 10, maybe a four out of 10, an unlimited dock would be a beautiful thing to see. Okay, so now let's get into the ones where I really don't think it's gonna happen because Apple will just cannibalize their MacBook sales. But the next one I'm gonna talk about is resizable windows. Like I wanna be able to use multitasking in a more empowering way. Like yes, multitasking works for what it is. You have your side-by-side -side view and then your, your slide over which is cool, I guess, and you can move the slide over from either the right side or the left side, right? That's the most customization and floating window, you know, software experience that you're gonna get. So what I would like to have is just be able to have resizable windows throughout the OS. Like, let me use an application like a picture-in-picture. -picture. Like, let me throw around an application on the home screen and just have it up while I'm still inside of the home screen. Like, don't force me to have two apps open side-by-side -side in order to enter multitasking or enter a resizable window mode because I wanna be able, like I said, to have floating apps, maybe be able to use an iPhone app kind of floating around just like slide over while still using the home screen or while navigating something else. So being able to have resizable windows and kind of changing up the multitasking experience a little bit is something that I'm really, really hoping for, more so than any pro level application or anything else like that. My main want with iPadOS 15 is like a pro level multitasking support but I'm gonna give that probably two out of 10 for resizable windows. And then the last two that I have is, one of them is external display support. I'm gonna give this a two or three out of 10 because I don't think the external display support that we want is actually gonna come. We want something that's gonna be very similar to the 13.4 cursor update where it's a technology that we're familiar with, an experience we're familiar with, but it's still different enough where it feels new, right? And that's exactly what the cursor support did with iPadOS 13.4. It brought a familiar technology to help you point and click and navigate your OS alongside your finger and your keyboard and anything else, but it was still pretty new to the point where it was a new experience where there was a little bit of a learning curve, but not enough where it turned you off from learning how to use the cursor. So that is what I want with a secondary display support. I don't want it to mirror. I don't want any more letterboxing. I don't want to have just my like video playing on a giant screen and then me still having to edit the actual video through LumaFusion on the iPad Pro. Give me some sort of familiar secondary display support with resizable windows. Make it as ios -y and ipad os -y as you want, but just give me something that, that gives me benefit and efficiency gains when going to a secondary display support or a secondary display with the iPad Pro. Because right now, there aren't too many efficiency gains unless you just want a bigger letterboxed uh, monitor or screen to view your content on. But again, that's gonna be a two or three out of 10. I don't think that's gonna happen. Fingers crossed though, maybe Apple will surprise us. 
And then the very last thing is gonna be pro applications. And again, this is a big thing that a lot of people want. Like people want Final Cut Pro, they want a full version of a uh, Photoshop, and they want all their pro apps to just be transferred over to the iPad Pro, which I understand because if you're familiar with Final Cut Pro and if it's a mirror image onto the iPad Pro and you can edit on the go like that, that is amazing to have. But for me, all the apps that I currently use on the iPad Pro to run the channel, to actually do my nine to five job and things like that, all the apps that I use, they're already, to me, they're pro level apps already. Like they're good enough for what I do and better. Like I'm not even using them to their full extent. So them bringing like Final Cut Pro over or Photoshop over, it's just not a big selling point for me. I know it's gonna be nice for a lot of people, but for me personally, I'd much rather have that pro level multitasking support. But that's pretty much it. So I think I ran down nine or 10 different features. Some of them, like I said, I definitely think they're gonna come. And then there's some other ones which are gonna be a little bit iffy, but hopefully you guys have some ideas as to what iPadOS 15 is gonna be like. Definitely stay subscribed, because like I said, I'm probably gonna do a live stream the evening of iPadOS 15 beta one being released. So we can kind of play with it and demo it live together and kind of ask questions live and see you know, exactly what to expect. And then obviously I'll make a dedicated video. So like I said, definitely stay subscribed, like this video to get this in front of more people. That would be awesome. Check out channel sponsor Paperlike. And until next time, guys, I'm really excited for WWDC. Comment below if you guys are legends again. A lot of people were legends at the end of the last video. And you know, you know exactly who you are.